Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be No Relationship Lasts Forever. I'm going to qualify that because obviously what I mean by that is everybody that you love, everything you build, eventually it's going to turn to dust. People come and go in your life. And the important thing that I've personally found in life, in relationships, the the best thing, the best part about the things that I teach in my book and in my videos is to help you create the life and lifestyle that you want so you can have the choices you want. Because the days of being with one person your whole life or going to work at a company when you're young and working your whole life for that one company and then retiring with a big pension, those days are gone and people are living much longer these days than my grandparents' generation were living. And especially if you follow what's been going on with the DNA, CRISPR gene editing, uh, nanobots, things of that nature. I mean, we're looking in, in, in the next few decades of being able to prolong human life indefinitely. I'm sure everybody watching this knows people that had got married, had kids, had a family, and then after the kids were grown, they left. They in, ended up in divorce and ended up in other relationships. Me personally, I've always been a serial monogamous throughout my life. And you know, since I was young, people have been giving me shit about my choices and how I lived. And even now, I'm about to turn 49. People still, I still see the angry, pissed off comments. It's amazing to me how people get pissed off and how I choose to live my life. And it's like, how is that going to help you live, be a happier person by being mad that I'm not married or I'm not settling down with one person or I've had so many girlfriends over the course of my life? And it's, I'm just built that way. I mean, I'm doing wh what I was created to do. If I hadn't have been this way, I couldn't have learned all the things that I, I learned. As a coach, my job is to help people get what they want, not imprint my way of living on them or try to get everybody to live like me. I hope you get what you want and the rest is up to you to decide whether or not you, you want to keep it, you want to change it, you want to alter it, maybe you want something completely different. And if you've read my book, Mastering Yourself, you know I've had a lot of different careers, a lot of jobs, a lot of different businesses over the course of my career. And that's just the way I am. That's my path. My path is going to be different from yours and everybody else's. But because of that, that's how I've been able to learn all this stuff. And that's why the things that I teach work for everybody. I get such great success stories that I share. And you see it in the comments you can Google my name, Corey Wayne, and go to chat rooms and forums, and there's tons of people on there. There's, Of course, there's people talking shit about me, but the people talk shit about me, there's usually a bunch of other people who are like, you don't understand what you're talking about. I applied what he taught, and this is what I got. I got great results from it. So, I mean, you can't hide from a bad reputation on the internet. And at the end of the day, the stuff that I teach works. It's been working for me for decades. I love my life. I'm very happy. I'm very grateful for it. I'm very grateful for the people that are in it. I get to fucking work from home. I have two homes. I have my friends. I got my family. I have the women I date. And I'm just having a great fucking time because, like I said, it ain't going to last forever. We're not going to be here forever. I care about, at this point in my life, I'm thinking more of legacy. What, what do I want to leave behind? My goal has always been to make the world a little bit better than the way I found it. I'm a type of person that's always had high standards and I've always wanted better than everything, whether it was career or businesses or the cars or the houses or the places I lived or the relationships that I had or the friends that I had. I love change. I love new things. That's just me. Other, not everybody's built that way, but that's okay. My path is different from your path. So I got a quote that I wrote, and we're going to go through this success story because this, this guy here, he's been following me for six years. And again, another great success story from a dude, and he's read the book, I think, said 15 times at this point. He's got an amazing woman in his life, 
and he's really happy with her, but he's also is the grass greener on the other side. He gets a lot of attention from other women and he's questioning whether he wants to stay with her or not. And so I can totally relate to where this guy is coming from because most people, when they recognize that, when they recognize they've got toxic friends and they know they need to get rid of them, they don't. Or they got a toxic relationship and they don't do anything to change it or improve it. Or they're working for a bunch of toxic people and they don't do anything about it. I mean, most people just put up with unbelievable hardship and fucking misery. I mean, granted, not everybody can just, you got a friend, you got kids, you got family, you got a house, you got bills. You can't just up and quit and start a job or start a business or leave your family, even though sometimes people do it. You got responsibilities. So you have to modify and alter your approach. But at the end of the day, if you're not happy enjoying your life, and the lifestyle you've created, and the people that are in it, what's the point? Why be miserable your whole life? I mean, if you're not happy, you're going to be much better to all your friends and your family and the people you work for and the customers that you interact with and whatever you do for a living if your life is exceptional, if you get up every day excited about how you're living and the choices that you've made. And if you've got kids... You're going to be a much better parent to your kids if you're really fucking happy and you're really happy in your relationship or whatever kind of lifestyle you choose to live. It's really hard to live in a world where everybody is trying to imprint their way of living and thinking and being on you and want you to be like them, and yet you're just different. I mean, I like when I was younger, I knew I was fucking different. I knew that I just looked at the world completely different differently i was always questioning i was like why is this the way it is why why do these things have what what's you know my family when i was growing up i heard a lot about war because my dad and my uncle were in vietnam and both my grandfathers were in world war ii and my grand my grandfather on my mother's side was wounded he walked across europe he got shot in the hip and it shortened his life i my grand my grandfather died when i was like six or seven years old i barely fucking knew him and so there was a big impact of war and warfare in my family and I want to know why do these things happen what is the root cause of that so I've always been interested in history and warfare and why is it what causes things like this why do people do what they do why does one guy have the great house and the cars and the great wife or the great girlfriends or the guy that has a great lifestyle and he has lots of great girlfriends it's like how does he do that well, why why is that and I've just wanted to understand people and the way the world works and that was my gift that's that's what i was designed for i'm just i'm just doing what i was made to do take from it what you will and take the things you learn from me and apply it in your own life and make your life the way you want it to be so i'm going to read this quote that i wrote and we're going to go through this guy's email because he brings up a lot of really good things the quote says success is a moving target for most people They believe that they will finally be happy when they achieve their grandest goals and dreams and their life is the way they want it to be. However, achieving your goals is only a temporary moment in time that will quickly pass, much like winning a championship in sports. The juice of life is to be found in the process and journey of achieving your grandest goals and dreams. By looking for reasons to be grateful and happy for where you are, and the experiences and memories that you create along the way. Happiness and fulfillment is an art, not an event. Achieving goals is exciting, but achievement without happiness and fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Failure to enjoy and appreciate the gift of life is not success at all. If you can't find a way to enjoy the process of living and goal attainment, You'll never be happy long term for any consistent period of time. The best way to live is to always remember and remind yourself to look for reasons to be grateful and happy in life because it's not going to last forever. Whatever you focus on will expand. Definitely some things to think about. So he says, hey, Corey, I've followed your work since I was a pimple-faced virgin of 18 to 19 years old. And six years later, I can say that your work is excellent. 
Well, you know what? I appreciate fans like you that have stuck around all these years through thick and thin and have diligently applied the things that I teach in my books. You're the kind of guy that I love helping and love getting emails from. People that are grateful, appreciative, and have the balls to actually apply the things that I teach and get the results. Because there's plenty of fucking haters out there, and I got plenty of them. And the haters can kiss my ass. But I wish them all the best. After years of striving to become a 3% man, I have read your book close to 15 times and have reached many of my goals, whether they be personal, financial, relationship, or purpose-related. In particular, I have been dating a woman for close to a year who is incredible. She's everything I want on my list of 10 qualities of my perfect woman. She is beautiful, successful, not needy, intelligent, and confident. She's a true alpha female and is completely in love with me. But now that I have spent so much time focusing on the principles that you have taught me, I feel like I have women throwing themselves at me left and right. In your book, you refer to the effect of all women wanting you when you have a girlfriend, and I feel like this concept relates. It seems that every week I engage in an incredible conversation or confrontation with a beautiful woman because I have devoted myself to the dating concepts that you have taught. Inevitably, it makes me want to get their numbers or hang out, have fun, and hook up with them. I swear I'll meet beautiful women in public now, at the end of the conversation, they will be looking at me, expecting me to make a date or get their number, but I won't because I am loyal to the woman who I am dating, who I love and is flawless. I am young, 24 years old, and pursuing my passion and goals like any man should be, but what should I do? Well, my job as a coach is to help you get what you want. And obviously you got her, you got the life, you got the lifestyle you wanted, but now you're doubting whether or not you want to keep it. And that's the rub. It's like, I can't make your decision for you, dude. That's not what I do as a coach. You got the girl. It's like anything. You got to look at what's the downside risk. You break up with her because you want to date other women because, you know, obviously you've been with her for a year. What are you going to miss out on? You know, because then the fear is going to be, what if the next one's not as good? But obviously you're seeing, you're young, you're seeing lots of opportunities, you want to take advantage of them because there's also a chance that you break up with your girlfriend. I mean, let's be honest here. There's a chance that you break up with her and the next couple of girls aren't as cool as her. And you might decide that you want to go back to her because I get those emails as well sometimes. And, and then you can't go back to her because she's moved on to somebody else. I mean, obviously it's going to suck because if she's in love with you and you dump her and nothing's wrong, it's going to break her heart and it's going to hurt and you're going to feel like shit because you broke her heart and she's going to feel like shit because she's got a broken heart and it's not going to be pleasant. But at the end of the day, does it serve you to stay in a relationship that you no longer want to stay in? I can't make that decision for you. If you talk to a couple that has been together for many decades they're going to tell you to stay in it no matter what because that's how they live their lives and this is the rub this is each of us individually are faced with the consequences of our thoughts and the choices that come because of those thoughts so me personally when I, like I wrote about in my first book, how to how to be a three percent man, like I was faced with that with my ex wife. I mean, it's a shitty thing to leave your wife and divorce her, and she was a great fucking woman. We had a lot of fun together. She was really fucking cool. But at the end of the day, I, I was I was in the same place, and I wanted to see what else was out there. But I was too much of a fucking bitch back then because I didn't know any better. I should have just broke up with her and dated other people and moved on, but I didn't have the balls to do it because I was terrified. What if I don't find anybody better? What if, because at that, up until that point in my life, she had treated me better than any girl I'd ever fucking dated. I mean, she married me. She wanted to marry me. And, but at the end of the day, internally inside, it didn't feel right. 
And the thing that I've learned to go with in my life is my gut. What feels right for me? What is my personal truth? And I've continually done that. So I, I've done what I felt was right for me at the time. And, you know, I'm about to turn 49 here. I don't look back on my life and have any regrets and wish I was with certain ex-girlfriends, even though some of them I still do see from time to time. We still get together. We still fucking hook up. I cherish them. I treasure them. I fucking love the shit out of them. But it doesn't mean I want to get back to into an exclusive relationship with them and stay with them for the rest of my lives. Now, does this mean that I'm never going to settle down? I'm never going to get married again? It's like, I don't, that's not my outcome anymore. Because at the end of the day, where did that idea come from? That's society and people around us say that you got to get married. You got to have this kind of relationship. Having a couple together as a family is great for raising kids. And there are millions and millions and millions of people, billions of people that do that. And they're very happy. And that's wonderful because kids need a mom and a dad who loves them and demonstrates a great example for them to grow up and emulate. But that's not me. That's not my path. That's, you know, one of my dearest, closest friends in the world is very successful, very wealthy. He's been retired for basically 20 years. He trades stocks like one of his stocks right now is doing exceptionally well. And he's going to make a shit fucking ton of money. And he's he's lived his life the same way I have. He, re, he has a girlfriend who's very successful. And he has his life and she has hers. They each have their place. But just about at least five nights a week, you know, he's either at her house or she's at his. But he usually has at least one or two nights a week where he's by himself. And he fucking loves that time alone. I love having women in my life but i also really fucking love my time alone to sit to contemplate to watch videos to watch documentaries to read books to learn to follow politics what's going on in the world that's just me i love the way my life is set up and it's like my buddy and i was just talking about you know we were t- talking about this the other night how He's like, I love my time alone. I really love my life the way it is. And I don't see myself settling down or getting married. I mean, he doesn't need to marry his girlfriend. She's successful and well off in her in her own right. And you know, one of the things he's thinking about is moving someplace and getting a nice house and kind of living out in the country somewhere. But, you know, she's got a few more years of acquiring wealth to do that. But he doesn't have any intention or desire to get married because he's again, he's you know, we're talking tens of millions of dollars that he's worth and he doesn't want to risk that and but you know so he's built his life the way he wants to be and he's very fucking happy with the way that is i'm very happy with the way my life is but who knows maybe someday i'll settle down and start a family or get married i mean at this point in my life i'm open i could take it or leave it i could be okay with never having kids of my own or be okay with having kids it's it's just that's just me that's that's where i'm at and you know you got to make up your own mind and your own decision but the best place to look for the answers is going to be internally what you feel in your heart what does your gut tell you because i i've learned in life that when you follow your gut things always tend to work out and when you don't and when you ignore that things tend to not work out and the reality is if you're going to settle down and get married if that's your ultimate goal it's like where did that come from do you really want that or was that then printed on you by other people and society. Because if you say you go and marry this girl and you feel this way now, it, that feeling is not going to go away. So if it was, I know how, what I did is I wanted to go explore that and it's been a fucking gift. I mean, it, it ended up, you know, my hobby of trying to figure out myself and my life and how I wanted to live enabled me to become the guy that I am. And so I'm able to help single guys. I'm able to help married guys. I'm able to help guys with living girlfriends just based upon how I've lived my life. Maybe you're more like me. Maybe, I don't know, it's in your heart. But all I know is that in my life, at almost 49 years old, when you fo- you follow your heart and you trust your intuition and your curiosity and what feels right for you, 
it's always going to work out. There's going to be bumps in the road. It's not going to be all fucking sunshine and roses because if you do leave this girl, it's going to fucking hurt and it's not going to be pleasant and she's going to probably want to get you back and it's going to suck. But down the road, again, you you can find love again. P you know, people die. Spouses die. People leave you. Spouses cheat on, you know, women cheat on their husbands and they leave. I mean, it happens. Sometimes you fall out of love with somebody and you want something else. But again, I, I can't I can't tell you how to live, dude. You, you got to live your own life and speak your own truth. That's part of growing up and that's part of being a man because we're all trying to do what is best for us. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to do what feels right for you. That's important. It's got to be what feels right. Not what you think is right. Not what everybody tells you is right or what they think you should do because at the end of the day everybody's going to try and print upon you what you should do and you got to listen to yourself you got to listen to your heart and follow that intuition so he says i'm i'm young i'm 24 years old pursuing my passion and goals like any man should be but what should i do the woman i am dating is everything i asked for but i want to keep playing the game even though i have everything i seem to have wanted have you experienced this? Yeah, I mean, I, lots of times. That's why I've never gotten remarried. That's why I haven't stayed with the same woman for decades. And I mean, like Gerald Salente says, the Trends Research Institute, current events form future trends. It's like, I, you know, at 49 years old, there's, I'm probably going to be this way for the rest of my life. I don't know. Maybe eventually I'm going to meet somebody and I, it's so awesome that I don't want anybody else and it'll stay that way forever. But I don't have any fucking regrets. I don't regret any of the relationships that I had that I no longer have. I, you know, I just want to see what fucking happens next, man. It's like, I don't know what's going to happen when I walk out the door tomorrow. I had a, an old high school buddy. I talked about this a couple videos ago that just got murdered a few weeks ago. And I mean, he was a close friend of mine when I was in high school and early college years. And we've kind of lost touch over the last few years. But... It really fucking sucked. He got carjacked and, you know, fucking shot in the back of the head in a parking lot. And his life's over. And, you know, I know a lot of things in his life never turned out the way he wanted. He fucked around in college and he partied too much. And because he partied too much and enjoyed his fraternity too much, his grades sucked. So he never got into the college that he wanted. He ended up graduating with a sociology degree. And he never really did the things that he wanted in life because of the choice he made. And you know, it's like, it was sad to hear that, that he died and he got murdered, but you know, it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to keep living my truth and what's right for me. Cause it's, it's going to end for all of us. Everybody watching this, your life is going to end someday. And so when that happens, what are you okay with leaving left undone? My old business partner that I wrote about in my second book, Mastering Yourself just died about a month and a half ago. And in one of the posts on his Facebook page was talking, you know, he never really got his music out there. He was writing a book. He never finished his book. And the post was one of his friends was he just ran out of fucking time. That's a tragedy to me. You know, I know when when my time is up, I'm going to be like, I fucking did it all, man. I lived the way I wanted. I'm fucking satisfied. I'm content. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. And most people can't say that. I'm very fucking grateful for my life and where it's at. I'm very grateful that all of you that watch this listen to me and appreciate me and and refer me to all and trust me enough to refer me to all your friends and family. This is the grass greener on the other side. Is that a problem to think this way? It's like you know, I thought like that, I, you know, some people will tell you that the grass is not greener on the other side and other people will. For me, it has definitely been a lot greener on the other side. I mean, look at this great fucking career that became of that decision to leave my wife 20, what was that, 20, 22, 23 years ago. It's like, I don't have any fucking regrets. It sucked at the time, man. And it, and I had a lot of second guessing and wasn't sure that I did the right thing, but I mean, if you read about it in my book, 3% Man, it's like, it's been a fucking hell of a ride, man. It's It's been pretty fucking great. You know, I talk about extensively in mastering yourself, all the things I've been through and the businesses that I've been through. What if I just stayed with her? I might still be working at the same fucking company. I might, 
I might be fucking 300 pounds overweight or I might have died of a heart attack by now. You know, the path that I was on. I mean, I was 190, was like almost 195 fucking pounds when I was 29 years old. You know, and I, I wasn't on a good trajectory then, but I made choices based on what felt right for me and it's fucking turned out amazing. I'm pretty happy with the results. So it was good for me, but again, this is your life and your your decision. So, you know, he, he continues on, have you dated the perfect women but decided to stay single? It's like, yeah, I wrote about several of them in, in 3% Man. You know, it's like, I always, in my mind, it's like, there's always another bus every 15 minutes. I can always meet somebody better. As I grow and I become a better man, the quality of women that I meet becomes better as well. As I become more well-rounded, the women become better and more well-rounded. Have fun, man. Enjoy your fucking life. Life is meant to be enjoyed. Find a way to get up every day and fucking smile. I get up every day and I walk out my living room and I look out, I look at the water and I'm just like, fuck, this is amazing. And I, you know, all these people are on the interstate driving and stuck in traffic. And I'm like, I'm so grateful that I get to live and I get to work from home and do what I do and help people like yourself. It's like, it's pretty awesome. So again, you can read both my books for free at understandingrelationships.com. Subscribe to the email newsletter by doing that. There's links on my website that will take you right to Audible. You can actually get both the audio books, at least at the present time that this video is done. I don't know how long Audible's going to, you know, keep that that open, but you can get both of my books totally for free by doing an Audible membership trial. Again, the links are on my website understandingrelationships.com. And also if you want to book a coaching session, maybe you're struggling with something similar and you just want to pick my brain and see what I think of your situation and give you give you my two cents. I'm happy to do that too. Just click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page of my website and book whatever coaching option works for you. And I will talk to you soon.